El Hierro is an island born of fire. As the most western of the Canary Islands, its young volcanic landscape is made up of a variety of craters and lava flows. But the island itself is merely the tip of a volcanic system rising up from the deep ocean. Off the south coast of the island, the German research vessel Poseidon is positioned exactly above the submarine volcano. The ship is on an expedition led by the Geomar Helmholtz Center for Ocean Research Kiel. On board is an international team of scientists who have gathered to investigate the youngest crater, around 90 meters below. So the Canary Islands are what we refer to as a hotspot, a place where very deep melt from the mantle is making it to the seafloor. And we're looking at a location which has a high density of volcanic centers. If you look on the island behind us, you can see that there are as many as 30 or 40 small volcanic cones where magma has made it to, this, to the surface. We're here investigating the volcanic and hydrothermal activity at one of the sites that erupted in uh, 2011. We want to know what are the long-term impacts of such an eruption and how long does the volcano stay hot and could it erupt again. El Hierro may be calm and peaceful now, but that certainly wasn't the case in 2011. Alerted by their seismic readings, geologists rang the alarm bell about an imminent eruption. The otherwise sleepy town of La Restinga, a haven for fishermen and dive tourists, was completely evacuated. In October 2011, the volcano finally erupted, not on land, but in the ocean. These images, filmed at a submarine volcano in the Pacific, show what the scene may have looked like underwater. As sulfur and other gases flowed from the volcano, the ocean off La Restinga turned green. Unique porous rocks appeared floating on the water's surface and were named after the fishing port nearby, Restingolitas. After close to five months, the volcanic activity ceased and peace returned to El Hierro. More than four years later, Seismologists from the Geomar team are checking to what extent the earth here is still trembling. We stellen here Geräte auf, das sind Seismometer, also sozusagen passive Geräte, die kontinuierlich Bodenunruhe aufzeichnen an verschiedenen Stellen der, der, der Insel. Und ähm, das erste Ziel ist sozusagen die Deformation besser zu verstehen, die hier aktuell noch stattfindet. Zum Beispiel es gibt eine Gesamtanhebung der Insel im Zentimeterbereich seit 2011. Und ähm, auch wenn es jetzt sozusagen sehr, sehr still ist und die Eruption ist schon lange, lange vorbei, gibt es halt ganz auf kleinem Niveau noch ähm, Mikroseismizität. Immer wieder, alle paar Tage, gibt es so kleinere Ereignisse. Ähm, die stärksten davon sind Magnitude 2, 3, aber immer noch messbar, deutlich messbar. Because the island of El Hierro is simply the tip of a volcanic system otherwise covered by the sea, there's much to be learned from studying the geology exposed on land. Mapping the geological features here can help to interpret and predict the landscape underneath the ocean. What we do every day involves a lot of hiking to cover a lot of ground and just looking at the different features we see. So the different kinds of lava flows, different flow morphologies and different ages of flows. And also just documenting the different features we see. So different volcanic cones or landslide features. And in that way we put together the geological map. On top of my satellite base image, I overlay tracing paper, and that's where I draw on my contacts between different features that I see as I'm hiking. So this provides ground truthing, as we call it, for the different features we see on land that also occur on the seafloor. Out at sea, the scientists are using a small submersible called Yago to take a close and personal look at the newly formed landscape underwater. Jago is Deutschland's einziges bemanntes Forschungstauchboot. We can maximal bis 400 meter tief tauchen, with two Leuten bemannt. Natürlich is Jago ausgestattet mit Lampen, weil es in der Tiefe sehr dunkel ist. We have a Greifarm, um Proben zu sammeln. I feel mich immer privilegiert, an Stellen zu kommen, wo noch nie ein Mensch war. It's 
very quiet and it's very serene, especially when you get below the surface uh, and it gets very calm. And it's almost like descending into a dream because uh, it's getting dark as you go down. Um, the, it's a world that you're not normally in, so it is very dreamlike. And when you're at the bottom, of course, it also gets very exciting, it gets very intense. You're not the least bit concerned about uh, being claustrophobic or being cold or being hungry or any of those things, they just disappear because you're absolutely focused on what you can see. Ich glaube, es gibt in der Geschichte der Menschheit nur eine Handvoll von vulkanischen Eruptionen, die die Menschheit tatsächlich gesehen hat. Und äh, auch wenn das jetzt vier Jahre her ist, die Eruption, die Auswirkungen dieser jungen Eruption zu sehen, das ist schon etwas ganz Besonderes. Scientists can stay down in the submersible for hours, allowing them to explore the underwater landscape. Meanwhile, the support team at the surface closely monitors their progress and guides Jago's navigation along the complex topography. So we use a manned submersible because uh, as geologists we, we need to get that uh, third dimension. Being able to look in three dimensions is extremely important. And also for sampling. It's a much easier for the pilot of the submersible to collect a sample if you're close to it. The scientist in Yago collect samples of rocks as well as fluids that are still being emitted from the volcano. These are all the smoking gun of the volcano. They tell us the condition of the volcano, they tell us uh, how active it is, they tell us what elements, what minerals are being extracted from the volcano and being precipitated at the seafloor and in the water column. Just what exactly is happening to the seawater is the research subject of two Canary Island scientists. They've been monitoring changes in temperature and chemistry at this site ever since 2011. En el Yago instalamos una serie de sensores que nos ha permitido estar midiendo en continuo pues todos esos cambios posibles que pensábamos que podían haber en la zona. Además, también lleva integrado una botella Nisky donde hemos podido coger muestras de agua y luego dos muestreadores de teflón que nos han permitido directamente en la zona donde pensábamos que se podía estar produciendo la máxima emisión captar agua directamente para analizar lo que es el pH y el hierro 2. Most of El Hierro's south coast has been set aside as a marine reserve established by the local fishermen themselves. The emissions from the 2011 eruption killed off a significant number of fish in the area, but life here has made a spectacular comeback, and populations of fish and other marine animals have bounced back to former strengths. Bueno, la emisión del volcán es positiva en el sentido de que estas aguas en general son pobres en nutrientes, lo que llamamos aguas oligotróficas. Entonces, las emisiones están añadiendo más nutrientes, más hierro y eso lo que está haciendo es enriqueciendo la zona y por lo tanto está afectando positivamente a los organismos. The rock samples brought up by Yago will be catalogued, packaged and taken back to the lab for analysis. This will include investigating their internal structure and their mineral composition. The findings from this expedition will shed more light on what's happening at El Hierro, but will also resonate on a global scale. So our overall objective here is to better understand the impact of volcanism in the ocean. More than 80% of volcanic activity on the planet is actually in the ocean, not on land. And so the opportunity to study a volcano that has erupted gives us a much better sense of the impact that that process has uh, in the ocean environment. And we take this one observation point and we multiply it 100,000 times to get a better picture of how this might be impacting the oceans uh, at a global scale. Among the finds made on this trip is the discovery that the youngest crater from the recent eruption is still emitting warm water heated by the magma below it. For the time being, it's uncertain when the volcano here might erupt again. But the present research has already succeeded 
in bringing some of Eliero's secrets to the surface.